Hey guys, it's Sharon from Digital Nomad Quest, and today I'm super excited. We have the one and only William Hung. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm feeling amazing. Awesome, me too. <laughs> so you've probably seen William on American Idol. There he became a viral sensation, maybe for the wrong reasons, but ended up appearing on Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, and so many more shows, even performed with Ricky Martin himself, right? Yeah, incredible. <laughs> yeah, and his first album actually ended up skyrocketing number one on independent billboard charts. Now he's become this amazing motivational speaker. Uh, he's spoken for Microsoft, Remax, and more and has done TED Talks as well. I actually watched your TED Talk and it was really motivational. It did. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. So it's just really amazing to see what you've done, William. I actually really want to speak with you for multiple reasons. So my audience includes like a lot of entrepreneurs who are trying to build passive income towards financial freedom. Yep. And my, yeah, my sort of mission is to kind of inspire people to design your life. And yeah, yeah. and when you're an entrepreneur, I feel like you kind of, face rejection all the time right because yes you're, yeah so you're being vulnerable creating things for the world and you're just subject to people's feedback and I think it's one of the keys to success to be able to handle rejection and, and face obstacles and you've really done that and done amazing things with your life and also I heard you quit your job recently because you have multiple streams of income which I want to talk about later so I just think you're like the perfect person to talk to so that's awesome <laughs> yeah no problem <laughs> yeah so let's rewind Mind, actually a lot so it looks like we both were born in Hong Kong and went to UC Berkeley so yeah like, yeah when did you move to the US and what was it like growing up in the US well I was moving to United States with my family mm -hmm. back in 1993 uh, I did not speak much English except for greeting people <laughs> <laughs> I it's, didn't know. How, I didn't even know how to order food. I mm -hmm. didn't know uh, how to handle my classes. So it was a process. Mm -hmm. I w I was in ESL classes uh, when I studied elementary school in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. It took about three years for me to get comfortable with the English language. Oh, okay, yeah, I actually moved to Hong Kong in '93 as well, but I was like three or two or something like that. Wow. You, yeah. How How old were you when you moved? Uh, 10 years old. Oh, man. So it's, it's probably hard to like pick up at that age. Was it hard to pick up English or? It took some time, but mm -hmm. maybe, it's, maybe it's not as hard as for, uh, as for other people because it's all relative. Because mm -hmm. some people, you know, it, it takes a long, long time and they still don't get it. It's yeah. just everybody's different. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then I heard you auditioned t for American Idol when you were in Berkeley, right? Yes. Yeah. So what made you have the courage to even do that? Like what made you want to do that? Well, I started singing karaoke with my parents since mm -hmm. I was 10 years old. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then as, as time went along, I, I, I like to compete in different things like video game competitions, math and science trivia competitions in high school. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, when I got accepted into UC Berkeley for civil engineering, I thought my dream came true. Mm -hmm. But I struggled with the, with the courses. I wasn't feeling passionate about them. So I knew that something had to change. And, mm -hmm. I, and during that time, I went into this depression. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like I wanted to like check out the world mm -hmm. for some reason. Uh, so my roommate introduced me to this game, video game, called Final Fantasy X for PlayStation <laughs> 2. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I spent like hundreds of hours try not only just beat the game, but like totally overpower, achieve everything in, the, in, the, <laughs> in all the trick and trophies in the PlayStation you can think of. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy. But at the end of that journey, I, I realized, wait a minute. You know, the hero in the game is pretty cool. So what if I could become a hero in real life? Nice. Mm -hmm. And then a few days later, I saw this poster for a school talent show at the Clark Kerr dormitories. Oh, Clark Kerr, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> and, then, and then I started watching music videos online from Ricky Martin singing She Bangs in Australia. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was really funny, really cool. So I want to do that song. Uh, I, ha I had no expectations, but to my surprise, I won. Uh, nice. Uh -huh. Guess what? Guess what I won? A DVD player. 
Ah, nice. <laughs> so that's what gave me the confidence to audition for American Idol. Okay, that's awesome. So yeah, what when you audition, what was that like? Well, I I, I took I took the 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 bar the train uh, mm-hmm. to the to the San Francisco Pac Bell Park at the time. The baseball, I was there. The huge, yeah, the huge mm-hmm. baseball park. Yeah. And then there's like three thousand other people standing in line. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, and I thought I, I when I was standing in line, all these other people were so serious. I was like, okay, well, I just got to do do my shebangs <laughs> and, and then see what happens. Uh, actually, I don't know why it was. I I ended up singing Two Worlds by by Phil Collins in the preliminary audition. Oh, cool. And mm-hmm. and, and then uh, the one of the former producers, uh, Megan Wolflick, she she loved my audition. She let me through. Oh, okay, got it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And 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 then the next and then the next day, I auditioned in front of the producers. They let me through again, and uh, and by that time, by the second day, they told me that, that she told me that I should sing "She Bangs." <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and then I finally met Randy, Paula, and Simon. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what. That's when I sing "She Bangs" again, but not so lucky that time. Uh, okay. Was it yeah. scary? And like, how did you feel when they like commented? I was actually nervous before I even started auditioning for the three uh, celebrity judges. Yeah, that's why my 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 movement is so jerky. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, so I mean, afterwards, you know, they they said no, right? So did you feel bad about it, or were you like, okay, that was cool, that was a cool experience, or how did that feel? Uh, well, I I always. The, the expected Simon to be the mean guy. Mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm. that's just how he is. Uh, yeah. into, I mean, I don't know him personally that well outside the show, mm-hmm. but I know that during the show, at least back then, right? Because now he's so much more mellow. But but back then, he, he was supposed to be the mean guy. So, yeah, I expected that from him. Like, you can't sing, you can't dance. <laughs> but what do you want me to say? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then, like, what was life like after that audition? So... Did you just become this viral sensation right after, or like how how did that happen? Well, uh, after it was a there's a, there's a four month gap between the audition and then the, when they broadcast it on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, when they broadcast when I when I saw myself on TV, I was shocked. <laughs> like, did they really choose my audition? Yeah. Then, but then I said, to, I, I I was thinking to my thinking to myself like, well. Just because they broadcast my audition doesn't mean anything's gonna happen. For mm-hmm. most people, nothing really ever happens. They just yeah. get a good laugh, and that's it. <laughs> and then, and then for my audition though, uh, right after my they broadcast it, I got like over over two hundred emails. Oh wow! Okay. In the Berkeley email, yeah, uh, it, it was like Entertainment Tonight, Ryan Seacrest show, movie opportunities, mm. and other other people that I don't know how I ever got my email. <laughs> Wow. Okay. And what I mean that that's probably like a cool feeling, right? Like, were was that kind of like the dream life you wanted to be this famous person? Uh, that was the start of of the whole journey. Yeah. Because because it, yeah, and then I got even more responses after that. Uh, I, 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 and the way I know that is one of my uh, former classmates. Mm. He mentioned how there were like t- t- tens or hundreds of people. She's selling my t-shirts, bubble head dolls on eBay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah. How I mean, how did that feel for you? Uh I, I didn't know what to what to how to look at it at the time, except that I feel that I need to do something. Mm-hmm. I don't want I, I don't want to just hide in fear. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, that's that's why that's why I, I uh decided to give the entertainment career a chance. Uh, and then, and then a few days after that, one of my fans, uh, Don Chen, created the website called WilliamHung.net. Wow. Okay. Today, today is WilliamHung.com. It got over like eight million hits in less than a month. Wow. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's that. And then and then that's when I got the record com- uh, record company. I got uh, call me. He mm-hmm. said, "Oh, hey, William, I just heard on the news that that your website got like over eight million hits. We we want to take a chance on you. We want to." offer you a record contract for twenty five thousand dollars are you interested (laughs) (laughs) and then you took it right (laughs) yeah 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 as a college student you know that's that's a lot of money yeah that's awesome so then how long did this music career like take 
And then, you know, what happened after that? Well, I knew that, that signing the contract moving forward means that it will be a point of no return, right? Because, because I can't go back. I, I really need to commit to it. I, you know, I need to take time off school. You know, everybody will know who I am. I could be on all these TV shows and live performances. So yeah, it took, I took some time to think about it because at the same time I got those offers, I got some criticism, uh, especially from the media, how I portray Asian stereotypes. I shouldn't be in the entertainment business. I don't have true talent. So yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but, but ultimately I don't want to have regrets in my life. Like, yeah. Because I, I, know, <clears throat> I know that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I, I took it. Uh, and then uh, I got like a lot of live uh, performances after that. And that's how uh, the whole career uh, started. Oh, that's amazing. So, you know, afterwards, you know, you said you took a, you took a job, right? So what made that transition happen? Like, why didn't you keep going with everything? Well, Sharon, uh, I, I wish I could live my dream life forever. <laughs> <laughs> getting paid lots of money traveling performing everywhere it's a great life you yeah. know like, mm-hmm. like no, everybody would take it but unfortunately after about four years my entertainment career slowed down and then i had to make a choice do mm-hmm. i want to keep going for showbiz or did i want to get a stable job and i think maybe it's time to get a stable job maybe i can settle in i make enough money i can just invest and and have have a peaceful life uh, and that's that's why I I, decide, I finished school for uh, get my bachelor's degree in math, and then I work, started working for the government in Los Angeles area. Got it. How long were you working there? And you've already quit, right? So. Uh, yeah, I just quit not that long ago. Oh, awesome! <laughs> Congrats. Yeah, thank you. So I I worked uh, two years for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and then six years for the Department of Public Health. Cool. Okay. And then I finally quit my job about two to three weeks ago. Oh, wow. Congrats. So now you have multiple sources of income. Could you tell us more about those streams of income? Yeah. So, so the, so, you know, it's Sharon, it's not about the money because Mm -hmm. I made pretty good money from my government job, Cool. but Mm -hmm. I just don't feel like I'm living to my fullest potential. Mm-hmm. I feel there's so much more I can do in the world and I don't want to be uh, trapped in my cubicle for the rest of my life. I think what happened was like when I first started with the sheriff department, I, I, I thought I was going to be really excited mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, cause, because people probably have seen like CSI, crime scene investigation. So I thought that would be the kind of work I'm doing. Yeah. Instead, I was reading uh, police reports about murder, rape, mm-hmm. burglary, and then I need to, they, they want me to just extract the data for crime reporting. Was so it, was it depressing to see that or like, yeah, yeah. imagine you read, you read all those details, you know, yeah. every day to, and you get, you have to get numb to it because you have to extract the information yeah. in there. So yeah, I, I, oh no, I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, and then for the public health job, you know, I, I, it was like a administrative assistant job. Uh, mm-hmm. in, uh, and I and I learned I learned a lot from it. I am very grateful for the skill set and the mindset uh, that I I improved over the years to get to, to where I am. But I feel I still feel like you know there's something missing because I'm not creating my own unique value in the world. Yeah. Okay. No, we're all about that. Like with the my podcast and blog and all that stuff. All about trying to you know, inspire people to design their lives. So it's really cool to see what you're doing. <clears throat> so, I mean, your ideal life when it comes to all these things you're doing, like speaking and stuff like that, is being a speaker what you're trying to, you know, do for your life kind of thing? Is that your passion? Yeah, it's one of my passions for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so, that, so that's why in the last three years, I started traveling and speaking around the world again. And then the way I started it was I made connections through Toastmasters. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so just for listeners that might not know what it is, Toastmasters is like a platform for people to uh, show up uh, to the local meetings and then practice their speaking uh, every week or every two weeks. Yeah, how long were you in Toastmasters? Uh, over eight years. Wow, okay, that's, that's a long time. Was it, I mean, was, it, was that part scary? And were you, you know, when you were first starting out, 
like compared to now? Has it been a drastic improvement? Oh yeah, absolutely, Sharon. Uh, I I think right now uh, the way I deliver my presentations is it feels like I'm a true professional speaker to before more like you know amateur just talking about himself you know. So you know, it's a big difference, but but I think that that it's be it's not just the program or showing up each week. It's mm. who you connect with. Uh, oh, I connected with uh, a very uh, important uh, person uh, mm -hmm. about three years ago. She's still one of my lifelong dear friends. Her name is Amy Lee. She works for Bank America now, but she was the catalyst for getting things started mm -hmm. because she talked to the president from the Asian Real Estate Association of America, and that's how I got my first closing keynote. Oh, that's amazing! And then that kind of made you want to keep going, or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just, I just felt so good. It, it, the, the, I was like, had tears of joy after, right after I got wow. off stage. Oh, yeah. that's an amazing feeling. Yeah. So yeah, then, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm interested in learning more about this because I'm a very introverted person. I get, you know, I get shy and awkward and stuff like that. So, you, do you have tips on how to become a speaker? Maybe around not only booking speaking gigs and also, you know, how to speak well on stage and stuff like that. So maybe you can give tips on both of those things. Oh, oh absolutely. So, so for speaking, I would say the first step is to figure out what your message is. Like sometimes we think about this overwhelming 45 minutes, 60 minutes speech, 15 minutes speech, whatever it is. But maybe we can simplify it by thinking mm. about if you only had one sentence, what would your speech be about? So figure out that one overall message first, and then you can develop a framework mm -hmm. because I hate memorizing my speeches. I don't like to memorize my speeches. This is not something I recommend to my clients or my friends. So instead of trying to memorize word for word, maybe a better approach is to know your message in your heart. And then you can develop like, like three keys, four pillars, three, mm. five steps, whatever your yeah. framework is. Uh, and then you can present that to the audience. And then what other tips do you have for like booking gigs and stuff like that? The best way to, to, to book speaking engagements is to be proactive, figure out who the event organizers are, yeah. and then just pick up the phone, call them. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So yeah, you have speaking, you've also, you also have online coaching for storytelling, you sell books, you also play poker, yeah. and then you also deliver inspirational messages for people and stuff like that, right? So yeah, those are yeah. your kind of side hustles. Which one do you love the most out of all those? Well, right now, Sharon, I actually enjoy poker a lot. Oh, okay. That's interesting. How, uh, yeah. How long have you been doing that? I started playing poker about 15 years ago, wow. uh, but, but more like a, as a hobby, uh, uh -huh. because I remember after one of my performances in Reno, Nevada, I got introduced to the, to the one, two, one dollar, two dollar Olympic games. And, <laughs> and then somehow I was lucky enough to win like $300. It's like, what? <laughs> How is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, I, I played on and off, you know, not all the time. And then, and then I would say the last couple of years is when I took the game really seriously. You know, I studied, I, 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 I really look at how I play. But the biggest, biggest win, Sharon, uh, from, from playing poker is not the money. The mm. biggest win I've gotten is my, uh, improving my mental game and, uh, and the mindset as an entrepreneur because okay. because because poker a lot of people they have a misconception that mm -hmm. it's about it's, it's, it's gambling it's about making big gloves looking cool and <laughs> looking cool actually none of that it's about making calm and calculated decisions every huh. single mm -hmm. hand and you find that kind of relates to entrepreneurship as well oh absolutely like it's, it, it because as entrepreneurs as we both know we have to take calculated risks every day yeah definitely how how long did you study poker like do you do that every day kind of thing or how does that work yeah, yeah now i regularly put in like 30 minutes to an hour every single day because i take the game very seriously but but before it, it, it you know it's just for fun uh, I would say, I would say the, I would say now, I, like because because of poker, mm -hmm. I had to improve the 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 intangibles, right? That allows us to succeed as entrepreneurs. For mm -hmm. example, managing sleep, because because before I used to be terrible at sleep, 
I mm-hmm. sleep apnea. I I don't I don't I just randomly sleep in the mid you no know, mid could be like late in the night, could be early in the night, no consistent sleep schedule, mm-hmm. no idea what I'm doing. And then the other thing I improved I had to improve on was, you know, my my health, my overall health. So I had to change my diet. I had to exercise more. So yeah, yeah. so because they, they affect my focus and the energy at the tables, but I realized by doing these things, the mm-hmm. intangible things. I'm improving my overall life when I when I do speaking on stage or, mm-hmm. or coaching up my clients, everything, right? Yeah. yeah, so that comes down to health. It's so funny because I think uh, this year I'm really focused on health. I'm trying to improve my sleep, also my exercise and diet and stuff like that. So what are your tips around sleep, actually? Because I have a lot of insomnia, so I'd love to hear what you're doing to manage that. So for sleep, I would say having a consistent sleeping time would mm-hmm. be very helpful for you. And then maybe give yourself like 30 minutes to an hour to power down before mm-hmm. you sleep. Uh, yeah. So one of the, one of the routines I have for 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 before right before I sleep is I would uh, review my session for poker, and then I would I might listen to a, a audio that that helps me prepare to sleep. Oh, interesting. Okay. You know, uh, may, maybe uh, drink some water, brush my teeth, whatever. Yeah, like yeah. Power down, right? And yeah. then one of the most most of the biggest thing that I, that works for me mm-hmm. is make sure when you sleep is pitch dark. Pitch no dark. lights mm-hmm. yeah no foam near you not too close yeah no yeah just just pitch dark and then yeah you, and then and then what you notice oh i notice is the quality of the sleep the way i wake up is so different yeah that's definitely something i need to do like the power down especially actually because i i think as yeah. an entrepreneur you're always thinking you're always trying to like work on your hustles and stuff like that but definitely that period would help me and so now you are actually gonna do a poker tournament in like an hour and a half right yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, so uh, I, I'll be playing at the one million dollar guaranteed at the Venetian uh, today uh, around eleven o'clock. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm excited. Uh, yeah. I, but, but by the same time, I tell I already told myself when I meditate this morning that I'm gonna stay calm. Yeah. And only focus on what I can control. Whatever happens, I'm grateful. Ah, oh, that's amazing. That's that's uh, i should do that more you know meditate say i'm grateful i think that's a that's exciting i hope you do really well at the tournament so besides poker you know you have the online coaching i'd love to hear more about that too there's a point where i wanted to actually try coaching and stuff like that so when did Uh when did you start doing that and how difficult was it to like start setting that up well for the online coaching uh sharon uh it's actually challenging just to to create because I have no, I guess it's, because the, the marketplace is very crowded, mm. as you probably know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so uh, the way I got started was last year, mm-hmm. I decided that I don't want to just keep running around and doing speaking engagements. Even if I get paid, like mm-hmm. let, let's say, pre, let's pretend, okay, pay like $5,000 uh, each speaking engagement. I run around 10 times around the country or the world each year. Mm-hmm. It's really not that great, you know? Because, oh, mm-hmm. because, I, because I'm trading a lot of time and energy to, to do those engage, speaking engagements. It could be fun, mm-hmm. but it's, I don't want to just rely on that. So that's why I realized I need uh, another source of income mm-hmm. to create the life that I want. Got it. Okay. Yeah. In terms of getting started, uh, I'm very great, uh, fortunate because I work with coach, business coach. Mm. Her name is Louisa Jo uh, of the Employee to Entrepreneur. And the reason I found her is because I had a couple of friends in my network that got amazing results by working with her. They, they, have, they now have like six figure businesses, online coaching businesses. So oh, like, wow, wow. Uh, uh, that's amazing. You know, it's like, right, I, I should be able to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so that's how I, that's how I got started, and and then why why I learned so far about building the business is like I only got like like a few paying clients, so it's not like it's not like all of a sudden I'm uh, you know this is the the next big thing for me yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I feel like I'm on a journey to get there because uh, because my because I uh, by by uh, working with her and other people in the network, I learned that we have to be very clear about a specific problem we're solving in order to attract the right people. Do you feel like you, you enjoy that part more or the speaking part more? I definitely enjoy the speaking part more, but, oh, okay. but, mm-hmm. but I also don't mind taking on a few coaching clients. And the way I approach the coaching 
mm-hmm. is I do like premium value based pricing. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. So, so it's uh, so for the listeners that might not be familiar with that, it's not about X amount of money per hour uh, mm-hmm. because I think that model is in the past. Right? It's a, it's about what kind of impact I can make on you in your life and changing your life. Oh, okay. And, how, and then how much is that worth to you? How does that work? So the premium pricing. So it's not per hour. No. How, okay. How does that work? Sure. So, so the way, so the way I I figured that out is I I did some market research on mm-hmm. other coaches that do mm-hmm. sim, uh, that doing similar things, meaning public speaking coaching or storytelling mm-hmm. coaching. Okay. And I and I found that the most experienced coaches they are charging like forty five hundred or, or six, even six grand uh, mm-hmm. for every three months. Uh, uh, okay, so it's like monthly type of thing, or like for a certain no, amount of months. No, or? no, to the, yeah, a certain amount of months. Every coach is a little bit different. Uh, mm. Some, of, a, a couple of the coaches I research, they what they do is they do something called VIP day, which means that they, you spend a lot of time at one time with that with that coach, and then he or she will help develop the entire talk for you, how to market your talk. So it's um. one one long day. So, but but the pricing is similar at that level. So that's how I know, like, okay, well, I can't, I don't want to charge something like fifteen hundred because that's what that's what my coach initially recommended me to do. Mm. Uh, for for th- for other uh, areas like health coaching, mm-hmm. fifteen hundred for three months makes makes more sense. But for for what I'm doing, it doesn't make sense. It feels like I'm putting in too much work, and then it's not it's, it, and and getting not enough for the for the you know out of it. So that's why I I decided to change my price point to three thousand for three months. Oh, okay. And, like, and that's why I'm at. Yeah. How often do you have to, do you work with the client then if it's like a monthly or a three month package? How does that work? So uh, but for my coach, he said that it's better to do weekly, uh, weekly meetings uh, oh, okay. when I first start out. Mm-hmm. And then the, the way we can progress, you know, once you get like the first three to five clients and then maybe get between five to 10, mm-hmm. maybe you can decide, you know, whether you can change the coaching model. The I, so the idea for people starting out the coaching program with the weekly meetings mm-hmm. is that is that you get more feedback from your clients. You can see what's working and what's not working. Huh, okay, cool. And do you feel like that coach really changed how you do a lot of your things, like with speaking, with coaching and stuff like that? Do you recommend having a business coach or a life coach? Yes, uh, I I am so grateful to have Louisa on my mm-hmm. on, on my corner because now the speaking engagements I'm doing is a is is more targeted to get more co- to get uh, coaching clients. Like so, I for example, I'm choosing to speak at a couple of uh, annual conferences for Toastmasters later this year, and the idea behind that is because you know people that are passionate about public speaking. They pay money to show up at annual conferences. Yeah. So if I speak for those conferences, even if I don't get paid up front, mm-hmm. I'm much more likely to get my next coaching clients. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. That's a definitely like a marketing thing where you, you kind of make sure you start with a target audience that actually cares about what you're doing and right. then possibly will convert. Speaking of marketing, do you have any other tips around it? And what's kind of the best way to get word out about maybe your events, your coaching services, and like your book? You know, what what are some of your marketing tips? Uh, for for my for my book, I I I treat it more like a like like a side income. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't see that being my, my primary uh, source of income, uh, yeah. unless something crazy happens on TV, <laughs> yeah. on the news, or something went viral, but. Yeah, no, I don't expect that. But but instead, what I'm doing with the book is every time I speak, I also offer my book. I invite people to learn more about my mm, book, mm-hmm. and that's a that that generates a nice side income, like between five hundred to a thousand a month. Oh, cool. Okay, so kind of like cross promotion with your different things. Sounds like you're speaking. You can promote your coaching. Uh, you can also promote your book and things right, like that. So right, yeah, right, that's right. definitely a good marketing tip. What's kind of one of the biggest lessons you've learned about entrepreneurship and building income? The the biggest one of the biggest lessons I learned is that you ha- you really have to be your own boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I I just quit my job a couple of weeks ago, and and I I realized uh, it's a completely different lifestyle. Yeah, definitely. You, you don't really know what it is until you 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 do it. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know for sure. I mean, I, so I quit my job in 2016 and then I traveled for two years and I was like oh. building passive income while I was doing that. Yeah. So it was definitely an interesting feeling. And I feel like everyone has to kind of experience that to really understand how entrepreneurship really is kind of thing. So totally understand that. And so I think like a big theme around everything you've done is, you know, facing fear and then overcoming that. What is, what is your advice for people who want to be as confident and fearless as you? Mm, I would say that that you you want to ha- have some idea about the the life that you want to create and then mm-hmm. what you want is and then more importantly what you want to stand for. Yeah, that's a good that's a good one. I think like understanding your why, right? Your purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The value that you uh, the vision, you know, that you want to put out in the world. What is your why or what is your purpose? <laughs> well, this Sharon, this is something I'm still working on. But, yeah. but but I would say that I want to see more people do what they love. Yeah, it's, definitely. It, 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 it sounds simple, but it's not because because you have because you have to be really honest with yourself. And mm-hmm. I think I I think that's you know to, we making a reference to your earlier question. Mm-hmm. But the biggest lesson learned um, so far in, in my new uh, <laughs> not new, but you know yeah. reboot uh, journey. Uh, I would say being honest with yourself is mm-hmm. is the most important lesson I learned because 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 you don't have a boss watching over your shoulder. You could slack off. You could do all the unproductive things that seem productive but it's not that important. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And I think like being honest with, with yourself, even, you know, if you were working a job, being honest with yourself about like your purpose and what you actually love yeah. is really important because some people just stay at their jobs forever and then they don't really think about, oh, this is actually who I am. I don't want to be doing this. I want right. to do something more with my life. So it is right. very important to kind of ask yourself who you really are. So that's yeah. great advice. So yeah, what are your future plans now? <laughs> like what are some of the goals you're trying to hit or like do you have any are you living your dream life? Like what's going on right now for you? Uh, well, Sharon, um I'm I, in terms of the life that I'm trying to create, you know, I I just have to take steps to get there, but mm-hmm. I would say that growing my online coaching program would would be would be something I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Uh it's not something that I could rush to get to the destination mm-hmm. uh, because because uh, because I want to still do what feels uh, happy uh, mm. in, in my heart first because because if I'm not happy then what's the point yeah, you know? mm-hmm. yeah so so I still enjoy poker I'm still gonna keep playing poker but but over time maybe the next six months and it's 12 months I want to grow my online coaching program and I could see that happening from my upcoming speaking engagements yeah, that's great. That's so great that you're inspiring people from all different types, like with, with the speaking, with the coaching one on one with them. I think uh, you're going to be able to make such an impact. And, you know, congrats on all your success. And really, thanks for sharing your story with us. It's really amazing to see how you've like overcome so much and become so, the huge success that you are today. And thanks for sharing your tips. I mean, I think this interview will be really informative to the viewers and listeners out there. So thanks again, William, for coming on the show. You're welcome.